Welcome to this session of my video series. In this tutorial we shall learn about constructors. The first question you will have in your mind is, what is a constructor? In the simplest terms, a constructor is a function. But, as we shall see, it is a special type of a function. We shall use this class to understand constructors. These are the two data members of this class. This function prints the sum of the two data members. Here we are creating an object, and calling the function. When this program is run we get this absurd output. The things don't seem to work correctly. We weren't warned at any stage about the missing inputs. A computing system should have built-in checks at places where things could go wrong. A PC doesn't allow us to use a disk without formatting it. There is a built-in mechanism that checks whether a disk is properly formatted or not. A C++ class needs to have a mechanism for guaranteed initialization. This is achieved with the help of a special function called the constructor. A constructor function has the same name as the class. You can see that the class name and the name of its constructor are same. So a constructor can be recognized from its name. A constructor function doesn't return anything, not even void. The return type is not mentioned at all. The constructor has to be called at the time of creating an object. Here we are passing both the constructor arguments at the time of creation. You can run this code to see that the output is indeed 17. This means that the constructor has initialized our class correctly. But where is the guarantee? Is it ensured that the class members won't go uninitialized? You would get a compiler error if you try to run this code. The compiler guards against the use of an uninitialized class. You cannot create an object of this class. The compiler forces us to call a constructor by passing the necessary arguments. This is wrong as well. There is no constructor that accepts one argument. The compiler ensures that the arguments are passed correctly. That's how the initialization is guaranteed. Member lists are attached to a constructor. They are an alternative method for providing initial values to the data members. They are not an alternative to the constructors. They work with the constructors, and can be efficient, and indispensable sometimes. This is a class that uses a member list.
These are the two data members. This function displays the values of the two data members. This is the member list. It is placed just after the constructor parameters. The list appears before the constructor body. The member initialization occurs before the constructor body is entered. This semicolon is a part of the syntax. This sets the value of i to x. And here j is initialized to y. The rest of the code remains same. The constructor arguments must be passed as usual. There is no change in instantiation of the class. Till now we have seen primitives like int and char as data members of a class. But things can be stretched further. It is possible to include objects of other classes as data members. This is one class having a parameterized constructor. This is a second class that hosts an object of the above class. This is the hosted object. But the class has a constructor that must be called with an int argument. The question is, how to call that constructor? This is not allowed in C++. Member objects cannot be given values at the time of declaration. The only way out is to use the member initialization like this. So, as I said earlier, member initialization is not an option. In some cases it is indispensable. It's the only way out. A class can contain data members that should remain constant. One example is the mathematical constant called pi. This is a class that contains a constant member. The value of this member should not be changeable. After the first initialization, the value should remain fixed. If an attempt is made to change that value, the compiler should give an error. Initial values to constant members are given through member lists. Such values are given before the object is constructed. A constant cannot be initialized inside the constructor body. As we said earlier, member lists are indispensable in this case also. Constant members can be initialized only through member lists. A constructor is of such an importance in C++ that a compiler can also write a constructor. If you do not write any constructor, then a compiler adds a default constructor. Of course, this constructor has nothing written in its body. No constructor has been written inside this class. The compiler automatically adds a constructor. 
but that constructor doesn't give any initialization to the data members. This function can be called to display the value of the data member. When this code is run the display is a garbage value. The compiler added a constructor, but wrote no initialization code. This is the output on my machine. Why does the compiler add a constructor? This is done to maintain a backward compatibility with the C language. Constructors written by a compiler are called synthesized constructors. A compiler adds a default constructor only if you haven't written any constructor. If you add a parameterized constructor, compiler won't add its default constructor. This class has a parameterized constructor. Nothing is added by the compiler because of this constructor. A compiler also adds a copy constructor if you haven't added a copy constructor. A copy constructor is added only if you haven't written a copy constructor. So if you added a default constructor, then the compiler would add a copy constructor. Copy constructors are covered in a later chapter. But this is how a copy constructor looks. Copy constructors are used to create a copy of an existing object. Thank you.